Welcome to The Shanae Show, hosted by yours truly, Kavita Shanae. Can you trust your gut for health and food advice? Well, entrepreneur, philanthropist, innovator, and founder of Viome, Naveen Jain is here to talk gut microbiome, how it relates to COVID-19, and more. Naveen Jain, thank you so much for joining me today. I know that you're busy running multiple businesses, even during quarantine. So this is a huge honor to have you here today. Thank you. Okay, first of all, it's an absolute pleasure to be on the show. And I watched the rain, it's pouring rain outside. I see it in your window. I think the rain came from you in Seattle. Where I am, there's no rain here right now. First, I just wanted to kind of give a little background. So you moved from India to the United States in 79. You got a job at Microsoft in 89. Eight years later, you left and formed your own company, Infospace, which put you on the same playing field as the person you looked up to, Bill Gates, you became a billionaire. So are you guys still friends? Are you, do you like him? Do you guys connect? Do you talk? Well, so first of all, uh, Bill is an amazingly great human being. I mean, not only he is smart and he's caring, he was as successful in business and the same thing he's doing as a philanthropy. To me, it is really the same thing about, you know, the success of people are not defined by how much money they have in the bank. It's really defined by how many lives they've been able to improve. And in my humble opinion, I think he's an extremely successful man because he's changing the lives of billions of people. I agree. And so are you. You have founded so many companies going to the Moon on Moon Express, Intellius, uh, I know I'm talent wise, I'm missing some. I know I'm missing plenty. You've won many prestigious awards in business and philanthropy. So, what has been the most rewarding thing you've done to date? I would tell you that if I were to really look back at my life, the most rewarding thing would really be watching children do amazing things. I mean, I could tell you there's nothing that even gives me a remote close pleasure than watching them really shine and doing things that I think I would have never dreamed of doing at their age. So when you look at our son who is going out and really focusing on how to make the housing affordable, how to make the senior care affordable, and really helping, you know, hundreds of millions of people around the world live a better life. And, you know, our daughter forcing, uh, focusing on gender bias, you know, how do you remove the gender bias in hiding? Or our son, you know, he's going out and now he just became a Schwarzman scholar, really looking at how do you use the innovation and entrepreneurship to fundamentally change the way people are going to live their life. If that doesn't give you pleasure, I don't know what kind of human beings you will be. And you know what, we could go on on that subject. There's so many parents that would love to hear your thoughts on parenting and changing the world and just being a great mentor to young people. So that's a whole nother episode, but enter Viome in 2016, where the goal of the company was to make illness optional. Users send in their stool sample and then they get it sent to a lab. They get this detailed result. It tells them foods to avoid, foods to go ahead and eat, superfoods, all kinds of stuff. It tells you viruses, bacteria, everything in your gut microbiome. Why do you care what's in people's guts? And why should people care what's in their gut? The first of all really is that we as humans, we are so proud of ourselves. We think we are that center of the universe, right? A little that we realize that, you know, uh, if you look at all the genes that are expressed in our body, 99% of them are not our own. They don't come from our mom and dad. They are literally are from 40 trillion microbes that live in our gut. And, you know, if you really think from a big picture, they were there for three and a half billion years ago. Humans are only give or take, you know, a couple of hundred thousand years old phenomena. They literally control everything that happens in our body. So today, if you look at the research, every single chronic disease today has been linked to the dysbiosis or imbalance of what's happening in your gut. And, you know, so talk about obesity, diabetes, depression, autoimmune diseases, Alzheimer's, or Parkinson's, and literally any disease now, including, by the way, now cancer, what they're saying is that really the cancer has lots of microbes inside the cancer tissue that protects it from not being destroyed by the immune system because microbes modulate the immune system down, say, hey, leave us alone. So uh, as you know, 70% of our immune system is along our gut lining. So if you want immunity, even this world of COVID-19, Guess what? The best way to develop immunity is to have the best microbiome that's modulating your immune system. And there are a lot of research shows now that when you have a healthy microbiome, you don't catch flu. You don't not only don't get the infectious diseases, you don't develop these chronic diseases. So our goal really is once we understand what's happening inside the human body. And by the way, gut microbiome is only one piece of the puzzle. And we started with a piece of the puzzle because that was the biggest piece of the whole human body. 
Now, I'm going to announce something that we have never talked about. In two weeks, we're going to be launching our next product that is going to be uh, looking at a couple of drops for your blood and doing all the gene expression. That means looking at every gene that's expressed in the human body. And I'm going to come back and tell you why I look at the gene expression and not the genes or DNA. Now, looking at that, we get to look at your mitochondria. Mitochondria is a bacteria that was trapped inside our cell. Think about it for a second. There is a bacteria inside our human cell that provides all the energy to the, you know, our cells, right? So mitochondrial gene expression, all the human gene expression, that means all the inflammation markers, every single thing that's happening inside the human genes. And wow. then we're going to look at the saliva, the oral microbiome, and what's going on in your mouth. So now, remember, even though it looks like all these fancy signs that we're talking about, now this is something we knew 5,000 years ago in Ayurveda, and by the way, 2,500 years ago, what did the Hippocrates? We all, every doctor takes a Hippocratic oath and they forget what Hippocrates did. All diseases begin in the gut. Let food be thy medicine, let thy medicine be the food. One man's food is another man's poison. And my point is, there you have, that's the gist of who we are as humans. How did you come up with this idea to even have this company in this sphere? So I think, uh, Kavita, every time I start a company, I have a simple philosophy. Once you are an expert in any field, you become useless in that field. And I hate to say that, but the point is you become an incrementalist. And what I mean by that is you can do it 10%, 15% better than anyone else if you are an expert, right? But you cannot do it 10 times better or 100 times better if you are an expert because to do something 10 times better, you have to challenge the foundation of everything that you have taken it for granted. That means you have to become a non-expert, right? And that's literally why it happens. The new people come along and they challenge the foundation and the whole industry gets disrupted. And then somebody else comes along and disrupts you. And that is a, you know, a destruction of uh, businesses that happens. That So to me, as an entrepreneur, the biggest thing about being an entrepreneur is constantly looking at not where the puck is, but where the puck is going to be. So every time I enter industry, it's never about the industry that I've ever been. So as you mentioned, I've started seven companies and no two companies have ever been in the same industry. Okay. And it's about asking the right question, not necessarily having the right answer. And that to me is a trick of why a lot of people fail. And I can give you an example of that. I think that might bring it home. So as you know, my, one of my other companies, Moon Express, and our goal was there to create a multi-planetary society because, you know, all humanity is living on a single planet. And imagine if an asteroid were to hit our spacecraft called planet Earth, all of us will get destroyed just like dinosaurs. So if you could hear a dinosaur in their graves, what would they be saying? If they had one good entrepreneurial dinosaur, they would be roaming on the moon, Mars, and beyond. They didn't have that. So let's not make the same mistake for ourselves right so my point is when we were saying that hey we can go to the moon and live on the moon what is the first question people were asking me was hey if you're going to live on the moon how are you going to grow the food on the moon and that to me is fundamentally what ex where experts go wrong the right question to ask would have been hey why do we eat food and if you ask the question instead of how do we grow the food because the only solution is to find a way to grow the food but when you ask why do we eat food? Suddenly you have many solutions because we only food, eat food for nutrition and energy. And what if you can get nutrition and energy some other way without growing food? And suddenly the possibilities that looked impossible can become possible. And that's really the way of looking at the stuff is asking the right set of questions. You know, I can go on the entrepreneurship forever, but that's, <laughs> let's leave it right there. Well, I'm not letting you take some of my food away, but I do want to talk about the test yeah. and our test results. So my daughter's yeah. too. So one of the top avoid food items on my daughter's and I's biome results was broccoli. We were both depressed because that's our favorite food. We eat it twice a week with salmon or whatnot. So why do we have to avoid that? What does that mean? Yeah. So first of all, uh, I'm so glad someone likes broccoli. <laughs> Many of us would rather have that on our avoidance any day. Right? But little yes, butter, so little salt. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me why. So, you know, think about it. We don't just quite make up a voodoo logic and say, let's just avoid broccoli. Uh, and so, so the reason is when we analyze your gut, and what happens is if you, uh, we see inside your gut that you're producing a lot of sulfide, and sulfide is something that causes a massive amount of inflammation in the gut lining. And when you're producing a lot of sulfide, and then we look at the stuff and what are the foods you're eating that have contains a lot of sulfate, because that sulfate is going to convert into sulfide. 
and the foods that tend to be that have very high amount of sulfate are broccoli cabbage brussels sprout and if you are eating those foods they going to start producing a lot of sulfide and the fact you are eating a lot of that because you loved it you are producing a lot of sulfide so now oh. by the way it's not forever so once you stop cutting and avoiding that food your gut will calm down your sulfide production will go down and then you'll be able to enjoy it again so how often should we be taking the biome test so so interestingly that if you change your diet your uh, ecosystem i mean it's really about 40 trillion of them that actually make up that ecosystem so think about it, 40 trillion and one of us right uh, and those really that ecosystem constantly is adapting and changing based on what you are eating what you are breathing where you live so when you live in a farm you are constantly being bombarded by the microbes from the cow shit the horse shit the chicken shit right and the plants and everything and that literally you know changes your gut microbiome right so my point is all of that everything we do in our environment changes the microbiome so our recommendation is when you change your diet or you go to a new place about every 3 or 4 months you should retest right and one of the interesting thing we had done kavita is that we tend to not make any money so this is stuff was for our uh, mission of helping billion people live without chronic diseases and you were asking me why did i start this business you know and i always look back and say i came to this country with nothing i mean i came to this country with 5 dollars in my pocket and just didn't speak the language and god has been so kind to us and we keep thinking that now i'm 60 years old what can i possibly do to pay my debt back to the society and i thought the best thing i can do is what if i can do something that can help a billion people live a better life i would have served my mission and i could have at least paid my debt back to society so when i go up there on a pearly gate i can say look i did my part right so uh but the point is as i was going through that it became pretty clear to me that only way we can do that is to constantly use the latest innovation and latest technology to do that and this technology did not exist and in fact no private company could have ever created that i was very fortunate to find this technology for wyom at one of the national uh, national security lab at los alamos mm-hmm. and we essentially were able to get that bio defense technology to work for benefit of humanity and at that time the cost of doing a test was $1000 and we automated every and we were able to hire some of the brightest people in the world the head of the IBM Watson research to do our ai some of the top people from in genomics that came from human longevity the person who actually developed this technology that lost almost he came and joined us because everyone wanted to be part of the mission to do something great for uh, great for the world and now we are able to do this for 149 dollars think about that for a second that became so affordable my hope is that within the next 6 months it will be under 100 and our hope is that as we start to do more and more test we'll be able to understand your body much more precisely and here is my next plan is what if we can take everything that your body needs all the nutrition and make a pill just for you so that will be designed on demand made to order just for you and that will be my hope is to launch that in the in june so that's about a month and a half away and our hope is that we look at your gut we look at your blood we look at your saliva and say you need 22 mg of this nutrient 11 mg of this 7 mg of that and we pack everything you need into you know six capsules and send them to you say this is for you right now and when you and by the way every four months we're going to send you another kit we're going to reanalyze you and then we're going to remake that as uh, supplements or the nutrients that your body needs and i think that's how we're going to fundamentally change how humanity is going to live and you and i together someday we're going to help a billion people live a disease free life every time you do something it changes what how your body reacts and you can see the results for yourself well i need a subscription to viome now because you know i took my test months ago and now my gut is different <laughs> and, and by the way i will be thrilled to send that to you because i really think you'll be fascinated to see that as you're following the uh, recommendation how your body has actually adapted to it so let's pivot a little bit to covid-19 because yes. i know you guys are making yes. big moves in helping with this so how does someone's gut microbiome affect their symptoms because you hear about fever you hear about cough some people have nothing some people are asymptomatic so how does their gut microbiome affect that 
So, but as I was suggesting earlier that, you know, remember your gut microbiome is constantly interacting with our immune system. Our immune system is really our defense to any disease, whether it is a chronic disease or whether it is a cancer. I mean, it's literally our immune system. And what we are finding now is that even for, I mean, COVID-19 or flu and all those things, by the way, are easy because at least that's an organism we understand. But even on a cancer, your immune system actually gets modulated by the gut microbiome. And what they found was when they are able to, in fact, in the, uh, there was a researcher at uh, New York University, they found the pancreatic cancer was caused by the gut microbiome moving through bile duct into pancreas mm -hmm. and in modulating immune system down and causing the cancer to keep growing. And this uh, uh, professor thought, what if we inject the antimicrobial directly into pancreas and they kill the microbes? Guess what happened? Immune system killed the cancer. Right. And now they are finding out that when you take immunotherapy for your cancer, how effective that is actually depends on your gut microbiome because gut microbiome and immune systems are interacting constantly. And if you have a healthy gut microbiome, you have a healthy immune system, and then immunotherapy works really, really well. In fact, this was the most surprising part. When you and I take a drug, what happens? We pop in a pill, it goes to our gut, it gets changed into something based on what your gut microbes are doing with that. And that determines how effective your drug is or what the side effects are. And they found that some of the common drugs we take, in some cases, it just doesn't work. And we know that. And the reason is because sometimes you might see the drug. So the doctor should know what's in your gut microbiome prior to prescribing your medication, correct? That's exactly what is going to happen. In the future, it will become a crime to be able to give you something without personalizing it for you. So whole healthcare is going to get consumerized and personalized. Anytime somebody gives you a one size fits all, it is going to actually become illegal because they're going to say, you have not looked at Kavita's gut. You don't know what's going to happen. How can you give her this pill without knowing what the side effect is going to be? So I really think in the next decade, not only the chronic diseases are going to be able to, we are able to prevent them and reverse them, but I really believe in the next 10 years, the consumer, you and I, are going to become the CEO of our own health. We will have more information about our body than the doctor will. And that's actually it's already happening. If you and I ever have a disease, guess what happened? We become expert at it. And we go and take the report and we show it to the doctor. I see a shift in people wanting preventative versus yeah. wanting to just be treated. But do you yeah. see an overall global shift happening after this whole pandemic where people are going to be more focused on preventing disease instead of just treating disease? Consumer wants to be able to prevent it and cure the disease. The health, the medical industrial complex does not like that. So if you have a chronic disease, think about it, what happens? They have a lifetime subscriber. They would rather not cure the disease. They rather suppress the symptom. So here is the best example. You have an autoimmune disease. Guess what happens? Instead of trying to find out, hey, why is this immune system attacking the body? They say, oh, let's just suppress the immune system. The beauty of doing that is now you have a lifetime subscriber. So why would you want to cure a disease when you can give them a pill every month and they have to buy it from you? So medical industrial complex today makes money when someone is sick and they don't make a penny when you're not sick. So what is their incentive to prevent or reverse chronic diseases or any disease for that matter, right? Consumer, on the other hand, does not like being sick. And that is the biggest shift what we are seeing is like every other industry, the middleman was gone. And now what's going to happen, the consumer is going to get Today, it is through Wyoming, and someday in the future, it is going to be literally your smart toilet is going to be analyzing your urine and your things, your tile, and your tiles are going to be analyzing your sweat and your weight, your Alexa is going to be analyzing your voice, your mirror is going to be analyzing your body, and we're going to have nanobots flowing inside our body, constantly analyzing and telling your iPhone what is going on in the body, and anytime there is a shift, it's going to notify you and say, Kavita, lay off that. Thing you're trying to eat right now that's not good for you <laughs> no chanel <Rose. laughs> that's what mine would say every day lay off the chanel rose <laughs> by the way that's a beautiful bottle i mean that i would I, where do you guys sell that by the way that's an amazing bottle of wine. everywhere and we're from saint tropez but we're sold everywhere so really awesome yes. awesome. awesome you gotta tell me more about that wine by the way. i will i will but back to the gut microbiome are we going to see gut microbiome transplants in the prevention and helping cure COVID-19, like we're seeing with blood platelet transplants? Yeah. 
so I think again the COVID nineteen uh, and the gut mi- gut microbiome certainly will be able to prevent the C infection, and it certainly will be able to prevent the symptoms that you see. Today, we can predict based on your gut microbiome how severe your symptoms are going to be. Because at the end of the day, we know how your immune system is going to respond. What kind of inflammation you already have. So, looking at your gut, looking at your uh, blood, we can see. Look. You have very high inflammation. Your immune system is not in a good place right now. And if you do get by, uh, if get infected, you're gonna have very serious symptoms, right? And those are the, all the things we'll be able to build an uh, artificial intelligence model around it. So I really believe that in the next decade is is some of the you know we're living in one of the most innovative decade in the human history. And I think fundamentally how we you and I are going to live and our children are going to live is going to completely change. I still sometimes wonder that your, your kids who are young enough right now, it, when they're gonna grow up and say, mom, you mean in your days, people used to prick themselves to get the blood out? You mean they didn't just know what was going on inside their body? You mean you used to speak to people just to communicate the thought on a 300 baud modem, which is like speaking, right? You mean you just didn't connect their brain to your brain and you just knew what they were thinking? <laughs> so now we are here, it's, it's May, do you say, open business or do you say quarantine a little longer? So my feeling is that I think that uh, we have passed the peak, but we are not at a point of uh, where we can start to loosen up a lot. And I really think in the next three to four weeks, I think most states and maybe few places may or may not be, but in most places, I think it'll be a time where we can start to loosen up the restrictions and we have to get the life back. I mean, people are at this time, uh, are just over it. I mean, I think we're getting a quarantine fatigue at this point. And I had so many employees who used to always ask me, can I work from home? And now they're calling me and say, can I come back to work? <laughs> Why can't we get testing for everyone in America? Now you'll be able to do a saliva test. You'll be able to do a, uh, I think, you know, we have, we applied for FDA for do a stool test to be able to detect because it turns out that COVID, the SARS-CoV-2 virus stays in the gut and the stool even after you get a negative results in your yep. throat swab. And so it's really interesting that, um, you know, th- those things are happening. Other thing that we have done is very recently, Kavita, is that we've also filed with a breakthrough status with FDA two weeks ago for detecting oral cancer. We can detect oral cancer with 91% accuracy just by looking at the saliva microbiome. It's unbelievable how the things, new things we are learning. And we really hope as we start to digitize the human body and understand everything that's happening, I have no doubt in my mind that our children will someday say, I can't believe people used to have obesity or diabetes or autoimmune disease or cancer. They're going to say, mom and dad, I'm so glad we don't live in your generation, right? And it is our duty. I mean, it's literally the way I feel is that it's not just for me or my parents. If I don't do it and if you don't support me doing it, guess what happens? We're going to watch our children and grandchildren suffer. And that is not who we are as humans to watch our children suffer. We can watch our suffer, but we can watch our children suffer. And that's why I say, you know, everyone has to come together. It is not my problem. It's not your problem. It is humanity's problem. And we need a couple of million people to do the test so we can get all the data we need for artificial intelligence to be able to understand the human body so we can, you know, we can prevent these diseases. So all I can say is, you know, thank you for helping me with the mission and that someday we could really um, help billion people live a disease-free life. You already are on the way to doing that, by the way. Now we're going to play a little game before you go. It's called 10 and 25. I'm going to ask you 10 questions. You've got 25 seconds to answer all 10. Okay. All right. Here we go. First job ever. Engineer. Oh, engineer. Okay. Favorite job ever? What I'm doing right now? Least favorite being an, job entre- being an entrepreneur. Um, <laughs> least favorite job, dishwashing. Favorite book? My book that I wrote called Moonshots. Favorite food? I love lentils. Least favorite food? Broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> adult, adult beverage of choice? <laughs> A wine? A red wine? What oh, kind Chanel of wine? Rose, Chanel, Chanel Rose wine. <laughs> Thank you. Queen Elizabeth or Meghan Markle? Uh, Megan Markle, any day. Favorite saying? Do something so amazing that people think you're absolutely crazy. I love it. And favorite curse word. I think I know what it is. Effort? <laughs> I was going to say shit, but... Oh, there you go, shit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably much better. 
That was amazing. Thank you so much, Naveen. Thanks a lot, Kavita. Really appreciate it. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and we'll see you next time.